Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about installing amps on a Mac. Now, obviously, if you're not sitting in a Mac, you don't have a Mac, then you can skip this um, lesson 12 cover doing it in Windows. So on a Mac, what you want to do is open up Safari or any browser and search for amps, spelled with two P's, A-M-P-P-S. And this is the site you want right here, Softaculous Amps. All right. Then if you, uh, there's much information about it, a ton of information about it. Uh, uh, it's big. Um, come on down a little ways and then click Download Amps. And then you'll see different versions here. I don't know what version you'll see, but don't worry about that. Um, you want to keep scrolling down to this Mac OS here. And then where it says if you're running Snow Leopard, blah, 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 blah. It works for Sierra and High Sierra too. Click that Download button. And if you're using Safari, it'll download to the Downloads folder. I'm going to speed up some of these processes so you don't have to wait. On your machine, these things might take longer. All right, then when the download's done, click the Downloads icon in Safari and click uh, the name of the app, Amps. All right, then uh, it'll do some more downloading and installing and finishing. And then you'll come to this window. And here you just have to do exactly what it tells you. And, and you can do it right here. Just drag this AMPS icon over and drop it on that Applications folder. All the files will get copied into your Applications folder. And the purpose of that is so it's available from the Launchpad and other apps like that. Okay. Now what you want to do when that's done is you need to, well, you can close this in your browser or anything else you have open. Then you need to open up Finder, open your Applications folder, look for AMPS. There it is. It's a folder. Double-click that folder to open that folder. And then inside of there, right-click AMPS.app. Okay, make sure you right-click or control-click and choose Open. If you don't do that, it may not allow you to install it. I might say it's blocked because it's an Internet app. Go ahead and right-click and choose Open. And then you might see a message like this. This is just a warning. It's not preventing. So I just click Open, and then it will install. OK, and then you need to prove you have the right to do this by entering your Mac password or Apple password or wherever it is. Um, and then AMPS opens, and it looks just like this. And that's it as far as installing goes. Now, you tend to use it a lot when you're writing code. So what I usually do is in the dock, I'll right-click that AMPS icon and choose Options, Keep in Dock, just so that it's always there. Now, the default version of PHP they give you is 5 point something. That's pretty old. You may want to click this Configuration thing and choose Change PHP version. And then I would go with version 7.1 or whatever's at the top there. That causes uh, Apache and PHP and MySQL to uh, reload, and that's normal. And then uh, you should see that PHP version 7 something there. The exact version doesn't matter too much, but I would go with 7 rather than 5. A couple other settings worth changing. If you come up to the top of the screen here and click that AMPS icon and choose Configuration Apache, and that opens the configuration file for the Apache web server. Maybe in text edit, whatever you have is your default uh, text editor. Now there's really no margin for error here. So first thing you want to do is click Text Edit and choose Preferences. On this New Document tab, make sure Plain Text is selected and that none of the smart checkboxes are checked because that will replace code with typesetting stuff, which doesn't really work. All right, then you want to click Open and Save. And make sure that Add TXT extension to plain text files is not checked. All right, we can't be sticking uh, TXT extensions on these configuration files. Okay, and then you can close that Preferences dialog box by clicking its little red circle close up here. Then choose Edit, Find, and Find from the Text Edit menu bar. Search for Add Type, one word. And you're looking for this section right here. See the word add type repeated over and over? The one you want is this one right here with XHTTPD right here. 
very carefully after, before that first dot .phtml, add a space and dot .html, and another space and dot .htm, and another space. And you need to do that so that Apache will execute code inside your HTML and HTM pages. If you don't do that, you have to name all your pages of the .php extension. And that's really a pain if you're not used to doing that sort of thing. Then go back up to the search box or choose Edit Find Find again. This time you're searching for index.htm. All right, don't stick the L on there, just index.htm. Now you're looking for this if module dir module directory index, and that lists file names that count as home page file names. It usually says index.html. You can just go right after that, make sure you include a space and type index.htm in a space if it's not in there. And that way you can name your home page either index.html or index.htm. And again, if you don't do that, the only thing is you got to remember to always use index.html for that page name. But rather than try to remember that, I say just change the configuration file. All right, then you can close text edit. I'll just use a red circle. If it asks you if you want to save, make sure you say yes. You do want to save that change. Okay, next you have to tell AMPS where the folder is with the code you're working on. Originally, mine was on the desktop. I moved it out to OneDrive so that I could access it from multiple computers, but it really doesn't matter where yours is located. All you have to do is go open that folder, and you'll know you have it open when you see its name in the title bar, and you see it has a file, a folder named Images within it. Then I want you to right-click that Images folder or Control-click it and choose Get Info so that you're going to see here the where, you're going to see a path to that Allen Howe folder or whatever your path is. Just go ahead and select that and copy it. It looks funny, but don't worry about that. So the only reason I copied that rather than uh, retype it, because you can make a mistake if you retype it, but if you copy that, you won't make a mistake. Now you got to go over to AMPS and click the little home icon. And that's going to open up your browser and the AMPS admin homepage where you can define your websites. And you can have any number of websites defined here. All right, so to define a site, you click Add Domain. Now, this isn't a public site. It's just a site on your computer. Type in a name. It doesn't have to be an actual domain name. It should just be the name of your folder or something, but no spaces or underscores. And then just stick a dot .local on the end, and that says this is going to be a reference to a local website that exists only on my computer. Then you have to put in the domain path, and there is zero margin for error here. If you get that wrong, it's not going to work. Now, that's why I had you copy that get info stuff. Even though it doesn't look like a normal path, when you copy it from the dialog here next to where and paste it in, it turns into a normal-looking Mac Unix-type path. And again, the only reason mine says OneDrive rather than desktop is because I moved it out to OneDrive to be able to get to it from multiple computers. Your path here just has to point to the exact location of your folder. Everything else stays the same. Uh, the second checkbox is checked. The add SSL entry is unchecked. Add an entry to host file is checked. Then just click add domain. Once again, it will prompt for permission to make sure you have the rights to do this. This, again, is just your standard Mac password. Click OK, and you should say that it was, oops, I have to do it again. Or maybe I typed it wrong. Uh, hit OK, and I should say done, added the domain. Then you can click this Go to Domain Manage, and you'll see it listed there under your installed domains. And when you click its name there, it should open up your site exactly as you left it. No different from doing view and browser, but this buys us a lot of stuff we can do later. Then if you click Hosts File Contents here, it'll show you it's in your host file, and that should include an entry for the domain you just added, and there's mine. It's always 127.0.0.1, and the name should be the name of the site. Now, if for some reason, your host file wasn't updated, you can update it manually. Again, it's tricky business. 
I don't recommend it for the technologically faint of heart because there's zero margin for error. But if you absolutely have to and you're used to messing about with this stuff, you can close up the browser and anything you have open. You can also just quit AMPs, get that out of the way for now. And then you want to open up Terminal. And to do that, you can click the spotlight up there at the top right. Type T-E-R-M and you're looking for Terminal App. Open that up. Uh, at the command prompt, type sudo space nano space slash etc slash hosts. And I think that should open up that file. Oh, you got to put in the password. And again, this is just your standard Mac password. You don't see anything as you type. Just type the password and press enter. And now here's the host file. Now, see, mine already has that uh 127.0.0.1 for Allen Howe Local, so I don't really need to do anything. But in a pinch, if you had no choice in the matter, you could enter it yourself. Just make sure you don't mistype anything. Now your mouse and trackpad aren't going to do anything in this little editor. You're going to have to move the cursor around with the arrow keys. Uh, you can press tab here to get that jump over to the uh, second column, and then type in the name of your site and it can't match one that's already there all right and then when you're done you can press uh, control x to exit and choose yes when it asks if you want to save i don't need to do that because mine's already in there and you'd only really do this if you know if, if there was no other way to get that text into the uh, host file once AMP is installed and configured, you can run it like any other app. You can, in fact, you can open up Launchpad if you want and look for it in there. It'll just be the AMPS icon, which is right here for me. And then to run your site, oh, you got to, that's right, you got to sign in. And you can just leave it running. You don't ever have to close it once it's open. And then you can uh, click the Home button when you want to run your site and click Manage Domains and then click the name of the domain and that'll open up that site in a web browser and show you um, what it looks like right now. And you don't need to keep closing and opening either. If you make a change in your editor, you can just refresh the browser and you'll see examples of that in upcoming lessons. For now, what this has bought us is the ability to take that header, footer, nav code, isolate it, in its own little area and then merge it into the page just before it's being served and you'll learn how to do that in the next lesson number 14. Alrighty, see you over there.